Over the decades of Apple's existence, they've entered a ton of different categories, from personal computers to phones to video cameras and even video game consoles. And whether you like Apple or you're on the other side of that argument, one thing that you cannot argue is Apple has had success. A pretty common argument to make against Apple, and one that I've made for years, is that they're very rarely first. They sit out generations, they wait for new technologies, look at wireless charging for example, and they wait until they feel the technology is ready to go, but it doesn't even matter that they sit them out. I don't think you'll have one device. I think you'll have a full screen device that you can carry around and you'll do dramatically more reading Light. off Light. of that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I believe in the tablet form factor. The iPad was not the first tablet. Microsoft had been doing tablets for years. Even Apple themselves had the Newton. There was a third party manufacturer that was taking a MacBook Pro and turning that into a touchscreen called the Modbook. But when Apple entered the market, it became very clear that this is the way a tablet should be done. So 2010, when the iPad was announced, and it was pitched as like the internet in your hands. And if you think about what the mobile internet was back then, this was a pretty big deal to sort of have a larger display. Like the tablet market back then was dominated by things with like resistive touchscreens. So you had to use a stylus and actually like push into the screen almost to get it to react. So something that was capacitive and this large was awesome. I mean, I went and I waited in line. I pretty much camped out for the iPad and I don't know, maybe I bought into the hype because camping out for a product that you've never used before or a new product category is admittedly crazy. But even from the first day, like I was hooked on the iPad. And it's kind of funny, the way I use the iPad on day one with the original iPad is kind of how I still use it now. I, I watch movies in bed with my wife. I reply to emails in the morning before I get up do some social media on it, but it's, it's always been a consumption machine for me over the years. And that just gotten better as the tablets have gotten better, as the displays have gotten better, then I can just do more on it. But it still is the ultimate consumption machine. And certainly you could do almost everything that you can do on an iPad now on your phone, but having a larger screen to do that on has really just improved the overall experience and still stay true to that original vision of the internet in your hands. I love the current gen iPad Pro. For me, it's as close to perfect as a tablet could be, but even that close is still not perfect. We did a whole video when I talked about what the iPad Pro needed to get better, what iOS 13 needed to improve the experience, and we're heading in that direction. But the iPad changed tablet landscape and it changed how people use a tablet. It really was the internet in your hand. I don't think I've ever seen an industry get more reactionary than that first gen iPad. So iPad got announced, Motorola was like, we gotta do something. And then the Zoom came out with a version of Android that was like just for the tablet, it was running Honeycomb. The tablet was so half-baked and rushed. If you wanted cellular to work, it was launched with Verizon. You had to actually send the tablet back to Motorola and they would add the module in and send it back to you. And I remember I pre-ordered one, I went to Best Buy first thing in the morning to get it to see what the competition could do. And you look at it and like, this is it. It was really clear from day one how far ahead Apple was. And then companies caught up. You know, Samsung sort of entered the market. They had their tablet line. We saw a bajillion Android tablets. We even saw Palm or HP at the time enter the market. There was a lot of options, but one tablet, the way Apple did things, succeeded for a reason. It worked out of the box and it worked well. In fact, it's worked so well, it's pretty much decimated any tablet competition. There's still some in there. Samsung's got pretty awesome tablet options. As far as market share goes though, Apple not only gobbled up the market, they killed the competition in the process. I think the, the iPad has just followed the Apple mantra. Like they waited, they saw an opportunity in the market and they just released a product that worked really well. It didn't do anything necessarily new, but it did everything very, very well. So before we keep rolling with the video, hope you guys have been enjoying the content. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get the heads up when new videos are coming your way. We got a bunch of awesome stuff lined up, including some giveaways that I don't think you guys are going to want to miss. And again, I want to give a big thank you to this video sponsor, Log Me In's Go To Room. So meetings are not the most awesome part of everybody's day, but they're an important part of business. It's a reality that 
I'm sure you guys deal with on a regular basis. We do it here too, and it can be kind of a complicated mess of setting up speakers, cameras, and mics to try to get us all look like we are in the same place. But fortunately, GoToRoom has a solution. This is an all encapsulated solution that's crazy to set up for, for users, easy to set up for admins, and it works really well. Now you've got an awesome 10 inch touchscreen lets you control everything. You got a Polycom studio that's the camera, it's the mic and it's the speakers and they sound really good. And it's fully integrated with GoToMeeting, actually it comes with the license for GoToMeeting so you know it's going to work well. You can have conference calls with 250 people and have 25 cameras up and you will look and sound absolutely awesome. It seems like something that would probably be complicated, but the setup is literally minutes. You plug a couple things in, you've got an Intel NUC in the box. The software is already pre-configured. You turn it on and you are set and ready to go. It's easy to set up and it just generally feels like you're all working and talking in the same room, which is the best compliment that you can give a you know, camera setup. If you want to find out more, check out gotoroom.com. Kick some business. So we're making a video about the best Apple products. I wanted to ask people in the world what their favorite Apple product was. So I went to Twitter, we got 140 responses. And I think a lot of people tended to agree with me. So the most popular answer that we got, and I will use Mark Lynn Sankin's answer, iPhone. It's one of their best selling products ever to change the world for better or worse, depending how you look at it. So other responses, Patrick Campalani, Said AirPods, simplicity and ease to use is phenomenal and nobody has come close. That's true. So another product that didn't make our list, but if we had a runner up, it probably would have. Uh, and Anshul Sag was saying Apple Watch Series 4. I think this is like peak Apple Watch. Very little difference between one and three. Four, I think they hit it out of the park. Um, our friend LEB said, when I was a kid, it was my Apple 2GS. I was in love with that thing. Now I believe it's my iPhone. And I talked about business school. My former professor, Raymond Peruse, was said the Macintosh because the GUI plus mouse defined the era of bringing modern computing to the masses. And that's what the 1984 ad was all about. Revolutionary in a big way, as of yet unmatched by a tech company. Internet was bigger, but it's a different category. So Ryan Negri said, iPhone and AirPods, both game and ecosystem changing products. Really excited for the future of voice technology. So when you look back at the pantheon of Apple products, like the one that stands out that Apple clearly did right, it's, it's the iPhone. Smartphones existed before 2007. I had them, I loved them. They were most often called Blackberries and they were great. And then the iPhone came around and it changed smartphones. You only have to look at what Android looked like before the iPhone and what Android looked like after the iPhone to see the impact that Apple's smartphone had on the marketplace. And since the iPhone first launched, almost every phone that's come out, whether you want to hear it or not, has been some iteration of what Apple's doing. If you look at the flagship market, look at the design language that Apple started. Look recently at the notch. You see Android phones adding notches for no reason other than to look like an iPhone. So as amazing as I remember the first iPhone to be and as breakthrough a product as it was, it was a hot mess when that phone first came out. So 3G was the big thing going on. The phone was rocking edge. You couldn't record video on it. So obviously you couldn't send SMS. The headphone jack was recessed so far that you essentially had to use only Apple's headphones that were in the box. There was a lot of things to romanticize like about the iPhone. And certainly I just did it in this video, but it was still a very flawed clearly first gen device. You can still hate Apple and appreciate what they've done for the smartphone space. If Apple didn't release the iPhone in 2007, we'd probably still be using some version of a Blackberry. You guessed it, the Apple iPhone. So I remember I, I set up the phone, it was singular at the time. I make my first phone call, cause it's a phone, it's gotta work. And I held it up to call my girlfriend, who's, who's now my wife. I said, hello, hello, hello. The speaker was busted on my first iPhone. I was crushed. So you'd hear all these news stories, there were lines, they were gonna be sold out. And my like geek heart hurt a little bit. So I set my alarm, I woke up extra early, I went to the Apple store first thing in the morning and they swapped it out and I got one that worked. 
and I was happy and I was able to use it. And then I went to a wedding that weekend and I was the only one that had an iPhone and there was a crowd of people because nobody had really seen anything like this before. No one had seen, again, the pinch to zoom, typing on a screen was still essentially a new experience and everybody had questions and how it worked, but everybody wanted to hold one. Everybody wanted to feel one and see what it looked like. And you could tell at that moment that this was different. This wasn't the next generation BlackBerry Pearl. It wasn't the new curve. This was something very unique to the market. And once you use the original iPhone, you knew very clearly that phones were never gonna be the same. So it wasn't surprising to see the industry react to that first iPhone and see a bunch of clones hit the market. But what's surprising is the industry is still reacting to the current generation of iPhones, whatever year it might be. And they're just changing a little bit right now. We've got thinner bezels, phones that fold, cameras that are popping up. But the design language of modern smartphone still stems from Apple. You might not like how Apple got to this point, but AirPods are the correct way to do wireless audio. So the AirPods, like pretty much every Apple product, are not perfect. No noise canceling is crazy, still only being available in one color, no volume controls, the list goes on and on. Yet despite their imperfections, you see AirPods everywhere. You see clones have flooded the market and that's for a reason. They just work and they work really well and they work unlike any other offering a competitor has on the market. Like obviously wireless headphones have been around for a while. Again, Apple did not do that technology first, but what Apple did was streamline the experience. It seemed obvious that those wires were gonna go. What didn't seem obvious that Apple's design language was gonna be just cutting the cords essentially on the ear pods, but it works. The pairing process is simple. The UI is elegant. Apple took something that seemed inevitable and made it easy to the consumer. You don't have to change the way you do your things for the products. The products just work for you. I was so like upset at Apple for removing the headphone jack on the iPhone 7, and it seemed like they were removed it so they could sell you AirPods that I resisted buying AirPods for a while just as my own teeny tiny form of micro protest. It seemed ridiculous. They would take something away and then sell you a solution. But when I bought AirPods and perhaps I got Apple brainwashed, the ease of use and how they could work for me just made things a lot simpler. I never liked the idea of holding a cell phone up to my head all the time. And by nature of my business, I'm on the phone all the time. So the fact that I could just have those in and keep the phone in my pocket was super simple. And like most Apple things, the UI is, is pretty slick. And the first gen AirPods just work. And what's surprising to me is how many they've sold, despite like not really even being all that great at anything. The fact that they are just convenient made these things fly off the shelves. Once Apple announced AirPods, we saw a very familiar path start to appear. Competition was coming out with some form of wireless earbuds. Some looked very similar and were obviously clones. Some were trying to improve the concept. But again, as Apple went, so went the rest of the market. Following Apple and making videos on Apple is fun, but also infuriating. You see competition coming out with crazy new things, foldable displays, wireless charging at the time, LTE, 3G, the list goes on and on, and you wait for Apple. You wait to see if they care, you wait to see if Apple's ever gonna do it, and when they do eventually enter, they're never first. But usually their interpretation of that new technology, that new product, usually works very well from the start and is almost always better than the competition who might've been at it for years. So we can debate all we want, whether or not Apple made the right moves entering these markets. But all you have to do is look at the competition that's left and the market share to know that they did.